All right, we just finished our first proving ground. Yes, bless you. And we've gone through two exercises. We've gone through two assignments. We've done one proving ground. Now it's time for something a little different in our third assignment. So I'm going to create a folder, and it's going to be assignment three. And this is our animation transformation assignment. So we're going to add time-based media to what we've been doing with compositing. In many ways, this is the last compositing project because we're going to be using pixels we've already made, but we can also include new pixels. So let's look at the unit that introduces this project. It is unit seven. The kind of animation we're going to create is a GIF animation. GIF animations are the earliest form of digital image. And they are, it stands for graphic interchange format, and they are limited to only 256 colors. That's the most you can have in a GIF image. And that's true no matter how many frames of animation you have. Let's say you have 300 frames of animation those frames can only use the same 256 pixel colors. That's the way it keeps its memory down. But because a GIF, this is a GIF right here, <laughs> because a GIF's memory is so small, it will automatically play in web browsers. So you don't need to have a separate animation player like QuickTime or Flash in order to animate these. We can also save them as movie files, right, which requires some sort of movie player or some sort of social media interface like Instagram to support the movies or TikTok. But we're going to learn the difference between these, these kind of time-based medias. The only things required for this project is your assignment. We don't have any question of the day associated with this. This is the overview. There is a lot to time-based media to consider, especially if you've never tried animation before. So we're going to try to create a narrative here, not just an image, but a story. We're going to talk about what's needed for a story. It needs to have this idea of a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has an idea, an idea of setting and character, of um, actions that happen. And we're going to use the appropriate timing of the images because we get to set the, the frame rate, how quickly we see each image. And in digital animation, as opposed to traditional hand-drawn animation, we don't have to use the same standard frame rate like for film. We can actually set different frame rates for each image. It will all become clear. <laughs> and we're going to plan it out. So what is the requirement? The first requirement is your animation needs to showcase a transformation. It has to be different from the beginning to the end. There has to be some change that happens that's notably different. This is not just a movement test. So it's not enough just to have something move around because that doesn't change state beginning, middle to end. Whereas this little example, and this is from a past assignment, taking the, the emoji exercise and using it for this project, you can see how it totally changes from beginning, middle to end. The other requirement is that you use at least one thing that you've already designed for the class. That could be exercise one, exercise two, assignment one, assignment two, your creature scape, you know, your first proving ground, something like that. So this one uses exercise two. This one uses exercise two. This one uses basically assignment one and two and shows the creature in the environment and then shows the creature transforming. So sometimes the animation is more subtle and sometimes it's more obvious. So I'd say this one's really obvious, very graphic. This one's more subtle. So this creature, the idea for the transformation was that it rolls into frame, but then it kind of transforms from this rock and unfurls itself into the creature, right? That's the transformation. And then it just does what's called a, a walking cycle you know, across the environment, and then it kind of rolls out again, or hides, and then the camera pans. 
This is an incredibly complicated one. It's very ambitious, but it kind of shows you all the different things that animation can do. What we're going to start today is our storyboard sketch. It's a rough storyboard sketch. It does not need to be very clean, but it helps, helps us understand our idea. And it needs to all be in the same format. So we're going to use a square format. We're going to do a three-on-three -three storyboard, so nine keyframes. That doesn't mean you'll only have nine frames in your finished animation, but it means you'll have a minimum of nine frames. So whereas this animation took something like 80 frames, it can still be told clearly through just nine frames. So the keyframes are for our biggest moments. This was done to respond. It was in the same semester as our, our big freeze in Texas. And so you have the creature shown in the environment. Again, assignments one and two. And then the creature is changed by the environment. You know, it gets cold. I use a lot of like slow frame rates here. So you really feel that, that freezing and then it just stays there for a while. <laughs> so this is the way you can kind of play with timing. Now, each of these aspects gives you something different. That's why I require all three. Your storyboard sketch is going to show your ambition for storytelling. I recommend very highly you keep it all in one scene. So a scene in storytelling is a specific time and place. You shouldn't be jumping around in time and place too much because that's going to make it really hard to tell the story in nine frames. All right. There are more examples. You know, you can always go to Imgur. You can log in with the details that are under our links and see more examples of this in past work. Right. This is a good just really simple transformation of the scene through the character. So this character grows antlers, they start to glow. So that's a transformation, right? And then it resets the whole scene. It's not a requirement that your animation works on a loop over and over again. That's called setting to reset, but it's a nice aspect. So we'll try to aim for that. They did a storyboard that basically shows every frame and it's okay to do that. It's best to just find your, your nine best, right? Because that's a lot of extra work and it doesn't actually improve kind of the, the proof of your storytelling. So you will often have more frames than you, than you need in your final uh, refined storyboard. The reason I require this, where you pick your, your nine frames to make a refined storyboard, is so you can have your animation included in what's called a print portfolio. So if you're going to print something that showcases your animation skills, you can't print an animation, but you can print a refined storyboard that's kind of uh, screenshots or film stills from the animation that help prove you have that skill. All right, so let's get into it. We're required to use something we've already done. We're required to showcase some sort of transformation. So this one actually doesn't really fit that bill, right? Because it's that same expression all the way throughout. <laughs> but these others, these are transforming, either in the scene or in the character itself. This is a good inspiration. This is an artist named Evan M. Cohen, who does comics, who does... Um, what are called lentacular prints, they're kind of holographic prints, but they're all pretty straightforward graphics that transform. So here, this is one of his comics. If you just took those nine frames and animated them, it would look like that. So what we're really doing are what are called rough animations or animatics, and that's as a GIF. He, he then uses that to make clean animations which might have a few other components. You know, here the, the background is moving behind it. You have the, the bird coming in from the left. But this is always the starting point. So no matter how ambitious your animation is, you want to start pretty simple to just showcase the main changes. So even though the, the content of both of these animations is the same, this is the one that really focuses in on that transformation. So that's what I'm asking you guys to do. And then once you get used to the technique and the skills, maybe for the final project of the class, you'll revisit animation and do something cleaner if animation is, is your goal. Here are some other examples. 
This is by an artist named Laura Paulson who just does digital paintings and then animates them. But these are nice, simple transformations. Transformation of a character, kind of revealing something under their hat. Transformation of a setting with these leaves, the light coming in and the leaves being blown off. Transformation of the setting here with the flowers growing, right? And then kind of being whisked away. So these are the three required submission components, a rough storyboard sketch, either drawn by hand, drawn digitally, but they need to be nine frames. Does not need to be really cleanly drawn, but it needs to give you a, a sense of the character, the setting, the illusion of time passing, the beginning, the middle, and the end. We should be able to clearly identify where the transformation is happening. We do our GIF animation. We're going to do them at 8 by 8 inches by around 100 pixels per inch, which is great for screen resolution because that's the only way you can see animation. Right? If we did it at a higher resolution, it would really be a slow process because we'll have a lot of images. And then we do a refined storyboard that's 30 by 40 inches at 100 ppi because that prints well at 8 by 10 at 300. All right, so what's our first step? We need to decide what components are we going to use for our animation. And I'm going to use my creature. So I know already that I want to use this PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down Option and save a copy of that, just like I did for the creature scape. Save it to the desktop and then move it into my assignment three. I'm going to use my creature and I'm going to use my environment. So I could just move assignment one in, or I could simply use the proving ground I've already created, right? The, the PSD. So I'm going to make a copy of that. The one without the lake. Move that to the desktop as a duplicate. Move that into assignment three and maybe rename it. I was going to call it reference for animation. This is an involved project. We're going to have three class periods for it. So we introduce it today. And we're going to, the, the goal is to come to class, next class with our storyboard. So we know exactly what we're trying to put together. We'll work on improving our storyboards and then starting to put it together. We're going to be animating it through next class. And we're going to be animating it through the 26th and then turning it in on the 28th. All right. So now that I know I'm going to use these components, maybe I need to remind myself of them, open them up. and. I'm seeing the different assets I have, you know, all these different character frames and so forth. But right now I'm going to turn off all the character layers and delete any I'm not using. And then to keep it simple, I'm just going to bring in my PNG again, just like I was starting my first proving ground. I'm going to mark that as green. That's kind of my hero character. I'm going to put it at the very top, right? And now I'm thinking, we just did the identify patterns proving ground, so I'm seeing the potential. So this creature could be really any size I need it to be because I'm going to be shrinking this down to 100 by 100. So I have plenty of resolution. But I need to figure out the square. If I'm going to use my creature on my landscape, what square am I going to use? So. If I turn on my guides, and if I use my rectangular square selection tool and hold down shift, it will give me a perfect square. So I think, okay, if I want to go from this corner, which I think I do want, because I kind of like that moonlight, let's get a perfect square. There we go. And then I can move it a little bit, maybe about right there. So that's my square setting. Now I'm going to use my guides 
And I'm going to cut it to that. 